the way I see it with real estate is really about moving to the next phase of your life. And so just looking for a deal strictly for the deal's sake, I don't really like the idea, but again, it depends on everyone's circumstances. That's just my recommendation. Hey there, it's Lawrence Mack here from Remax Realtron to give you a real estate update around April 10th, 2020. First off, in terms of the statistics, the average house in Toronto sold for $903,000, up 15% from last year. Toronto Detached, $1.47 million, up 16%. Detached Homes in Mississauga, $1.27 million, up 18%. In Oakville, Detached Homes, $1.43 million, up 5%. And in Lorne Park, four-bedroom homes detached, uh, $2.9 million, up 75% from last year. Also, Toronto condos, $712,000, up 18% from 2019. In general, March uh, was pretty good, actually. It was a lot better than last year. But the main thing is, after the lockdown on March 15th, everything took a nosedive. If you take a look at some of my graphs and uh, my statistics such as that, you'll see that the second half of March was a lot worse, and the first half of March was very, very quite good. So we have to wait until April to see how everything shakes out. In terms of buyers, um, I believe right now it's a very, very good time to buy. And the main reason for that is that a lot of sellers are very, very desperate to sell. I've heard stories of somebody, uh, a colleague who helped them sell a house 16% below the list price. And the main reason for that is they did a fast closing. They didn't have any conditions such as financing and inspection. And they didn't even visit the property. It was sight unseen because of the virtual tour. Um, because of those reasons, it actually just came very quick. And I guess the seller was desperate. And so they just sold it to them. So there are a lot of opportunities to buy. Uh, in general, my opinion is that if you're trying to get into your first house or you're trying to upgrade your house, uh, the main reason is if you're trying to upgrade to a nicer lifestyle, then you really want to find a house that would work for you and your family. I wouldn't recommend just buying a house just because it's cheap. I mean, unless that's really what you want to do or maybe, you know, you're by yourself and you're okay with that. But in general, the way I see it with real estate is really about moving to the next phase of your life. And so just looking for a deal strictly for the deal's sake, I don't really like the idea. But again, it depends on everyone's circumstances. That's just my recommendation. In terms of selling, uh, selling isn't going very well right now because of that reason. Like I said, it's a little bit more of a buyer's market, which means that it's bad for our sellers. It's deemed an essential service by the government. And the main reason is because of the critical things when someone actually has to buy and sell a house, they should be able to be allowed to get it done. But the main problem right now with selling is things like stagers, things like inspectors, painters, movers, all those people are not working. I mean, there are some that do, but a lot of them aren't working. Plus you aren't allowed open houses legally. Uh, you were, it was highly recommended before that open houses shouldn't be allowed, but now it's just purely banned. And the main reason, of course, is because of public safety. So because of those reasons, selling right now isn't really that great. Do it if you really need to, but if you don't, my recommendation is not to do it. But again, everyone's circumstance is different. In terms of landlords and renters, that whole landscape is a little bit different. Again, I have uh, messaged uh, the landlords previously regarding the different circumstances that might come up for that. Uh, if you have a question about that, just message me directly. But it's a whole cascade effect. So for instance, a lot of people might be losing their jobs and so maybe now renters can't pay the rent, which is affects the landlord and then now the landlord can't pay the mortgage and then now something happens to the property and now the renter has to leave because you have to sell it. There's a whole bunch of issues involved with that whole process. But if you do have a problem, both as a renter or as a landlord, please message me. I could either give my advice or give some suggestions or maybe put you in touch with a paralegal or a lawyer for a more, you know, um, more serious type of things that you might need to do. But all those instances, I think, are very, very important. Just understand the current landscape as it is now. It's really tough for everybody. I think there will be a recession coming down the road, depending on how long this lasts. So we'll see how it goes. In terms of small business people, that is also another issue that we have going on because of the lockdown. A lot of restaurants, you know, can't really open. Uh, maybe they can do takeout business, but if you can't do anything, it's very difficult to pay rent. You know, maybe one or two months is okay. I don't know how you maintain that for six, nine months, 12 months, where you're just paying rent and not making any money. That's going to be a significant issue. A lot of other types of businesses where they can't even open, 
I don't know what to do about that. Uh, so I see another cascade effect happening there. If this happens for a while, I do see that there's a lot of opportunity on the buy side on the commercial properties. So whether you're, you need to lease a space or maybe you need to buy a place, buy a plaza, buy a commercial unit, whatever it is that you need to do, I think if you're financially able to, there will be a lot of opportunity down the road, specifically in the commercial space because of those reasons. So, but if you know of anybody that is struggling or needs help, uh, I do, um, I plan on doing a lot more in terms of the small business realm, in terms of uh, different advertising and different ma uh, marketing and masterminding with them and meetings and networking. So if that's something that interests you or if you know somebody that it would interest, please get in touch with me, that'd be great. In terms of financing, uh, the COVID-19 relief, the government is offering a lot of different kinds of relief programs. So please look into that, whether it's a $2,000 emergency relief, or you're talking about payroll relief, or $40,000 for a small business. There's a lot of different things which um, you really should look at, and I think it will help, hopefully, you know, let you stay in business or let you just stay afloat because it's going to be difficult for everybody. Uh, lastly, in terms of financing, there was a previous video, which, uh, you know, I'll link below. But the, the video is pretty good in terms of the different financing options and landscape, at least now, um, the first half of April, just so they get an idea of how the banks are working and what's available out there. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a call or text me at 416-276-4895. Talk soon. Bye-bye.